This is um, an exhibition of our work in Seaton, in Devon, along the coast, and it's an exhibition of drawings. The way I work as a painter is that I find locations I like, which are very diverse, different countries I work in, um, and I start with drawing, always. Drawing is such a fundamental thing that with the sun on your back, if you're lucky, or the rain or whatever, you can be part of the elements and make notes through drawing, which then go into my painting. Most of my paintings are done in the studio, especially the big ones. Small paintings are done on the spot with pastel very often, but drawing, ever since I was a kid, has been totally what I do. And uh, it's the way I record things, the way I make notes, the way I internalise the ideas. And then when I'm in the studio, I can actually project those and, and really make big paintings from them. I mean, for example, if you look at the, the first drawing here, this is a, a drawing done in the south of France in Provence uh, of a place called Gord. It's one of the great uh, views in the whole of the south of France. It's a, a rocky promontory with all these wonderful buildings built up in a series. There are no foundations, they're built off the living rock. And it ends with that Renaissance chateau at the top there. And these uh, buildings uh, create a wonderful juxtaposition of, of shapes and ideas. And I've done many paintings of Gord, and they all start from drawings like that. The, um, the two drawings next to it are studies that I did for large paintings when I needed detail for the foregrounds. And so these were harvest paintings when I worked in the fields along the Otter Valley in Devon where I live. And uh, you can see that sometimes if you've got working close up, so you're looking through the landscape at things in the foreground, you do need a lot of very sharp detail. And therefore I would get these into the studio uh, and make drawings. These are put into pots and I make drawings from them and then implant them into the paintings. One of the places I've worked a great deal over the years, indeed we've had a studio there for a long time, is Venice. Every painter paints Venice, but to find your own identity, to find the way you want to paint it personally, takes a long time really. And I must confess, when I first visited Venice, I was a bit intimidated by the images of Monet and Canaletto and uh, Turner and all the pa painters who worked there, through the Impressionists, right through to Singer Sargent. But gradually, the more time you spend there, the more you spend time looking and drawing, then you begin to find a personal way of looking at it. I love looking into light. If you look at this drawing here, for example, you can see that I'm looking into light, where it creates a lot of shadows thrown forward. This is looking along to St. Mark's, along the fundamental there, um, and so too is the lower one. And in this one, you've got Santa Maria della Salute, the church, and this big open plain with people walking along towards St. Mark's. Um, this is interesting because uh, when we had the studio in Venice, uh, my son and his uh, new wife came out to visit us and brought us this big bunch of flowers, which he put on the windowsill. Um, and I sort of made a drawing of that against the, the architecture of, of the distant wall there. So Venice is, is always a, a great place to be. And the place that I've painted most, I suppose, is the fish market. There are a lot of very large pages, in fact I've just completed one, of the fish market, which is like a big cathedral, where people come in the early morning, they lay all the fish out, and then people come along and buy, and you get the floor constantly wet with reflections of the people and all the things that are going on. And this is part of the fish market jutting out into the Grand Canal. Sometimes, if you go and sit in a square and drink lots of coffee, which I do, you can actually make sketch drawings of the people. Um, there's a dog in that one who, who lay down very near us as we were drinking. And all this kind of thing. And all these feed into the paintings. So, for example, the drawing of the, the lady with the pram, I've actually used that uh, more than once, actually, in a large painting. And so all these details of drawings and information feed back into the work. These are the first two <coughs> colour uh, color paintings along this line. These are watercolours, pen and watercolour. Uh, and these were done in, in Sicily, um, in the 
Madoni Mountains, and you can see they're very sketchy. I never, as a child, or indeed beyond, liked cacti, but somehow in that landscape, which is very vibrant and full of colour, the, these very abstract shapes seem to work very well for me. And again, I've done very large paintings, some as much as six foot wide of these, of these images. And this mountainous region in the middle of Sicily really turns me on because of all the levels. And here you can see I've used a little bit of foreground material to actually see the landscape through. And that gives a lot of spatial depth. The more you have plants close to you and look at the distance beyond, you can actually create as much space in your painting as you want. It is a device, but I, I've used it quite a lot. If we move around to this area, this um, drawing here is, is a special one to me. It's a drawing of Mont Saint-Victoire. Mont Saint-Victoire in the south of France is very near to where Cézanne lived, and he painted it over and over again. And I went there with a, a photojournalist called Peter Brimmikum, and he kept complaining that he'd seen all these pylons, and he said it spoiled his photographs. I said, I didn't actually see them. I get so involved in my drawing that I, I select as I go, and I honestly didn't see them, and they did not, do not form part of my composition. If we move on to the top one here, this is a, a place that is very special to me, and that is the Isle of Skye. And the Isle of Skye, I always thought before I went there that it would be a flat island. In fact, it, it's nothing like that at all. It's actually a very mountainous region with beautiful shapes. And we, uh, we've spent a lot of time there recently, but I've been painting a series of paintings of the lakes and the coastal edges. Um, the coast, um, these are Irish coasts, um, and I, I work a lot on the west coast of Ireland. And uh, I've uh, done a fair bit of work along this area here, which is the Dingle Peninsula, um, looking out towards the Blasket Islands. These are done in sepia. The one on the right here is done entirely with a brush, with little dots, with a pen, just to, light, to show the texture on the water. Um, th this one here is uh, of just rocks coming into the sea and again it's mostly a brush with sepia ink laid on. So the method of drawing that I use, always with a pen, I don't like drawing in pencil very much, um, and sometimes I augment it with uh, a brush just dipping into water, dipping into ink and creating these half tones. Sometimes I get carried away with little views like that with a three on that sheet three little views, and I'm working quickly to look at the light. Um, the one thing about painting is that it's the light really which turns you on, the kind of mood of the day, um, and when in Ireland particularly, you get deep, moody, dark skies, and it can be foreboding, and you just want to spend all your time in the pub. Um, but actually, uh, if you get light breaking through the clouds, flooding the landscape, suddenly the magic starts and you can't draw quickly enough to encompass and to get down all the information you want um, about, the, about the light and the way it's changing. So all these factors about the way the conditions of light, the way you actually look at the landscape, the way you select the images, all these things are terribly important to, to make up paintings uh, back in my studio in Devon. If we move around now to looking at these, and just, if I may, just talk about a place that's been significant to me in my life. And that is, I live in Devon, I live in, in East Devon, with, along the River Otter, and I've painted there many, many times. Um, and it's a very romantic, soft landscape. But if you, after a while, think you need something more, um, then you find the rugged, coastline of North Devon. And I've worked at Heartland and along the coast from Heartland for many years. In fact, most of the paintings that I've got in public collections, like Plymouth Art Gallery in Exeter, the University of Exeter and more, um, are done at Heartland. And I've done some enormously big paintings there, six foot by four, quite a lot. Uh, so these studies on the spot um, are, are pretty complete pieces of work. They're done with a combination of paint, watercolour 
Bible, that is, and pastel. Um, and I'm trying to look at some of these extraordinary shapes, which some of them are like cathedral shapes along the north coast of Devon. And it's an area that I really feel an enormous affinity for. And it, people have called it cotton territory, cotton landscape, because I must have done nearly 100 completed paintings of large scale up there. 